So here is our periodic table. Do we agree with it? Yes. Right? That's a regular standard periodic table. Like you did magic trick. Right? So I'm going to show you guys a magic trick here. So if we take how many electrons on each energy level? Each energy level. So here's one energy level, two energy levels. What do you notice? How many electrons can fit in, in, in these two, in all these energy levels? Two, right? And we're going to bring that over here. Right? So notice we have two electrons, sorry, two atoms that we're highlighting, groups one and two. Right? And the only one, the exception we bring over is helium. This is what we're going to note as the S. Okay? This is our S subshell. Now, we're going to move across, okay? and we're going to look at these over here. These are going to be represented by our P. All that? All that. Everything within here is our D. And all these down here are the F shell. Okay? They're going to represent the F shell. So, by being able to identify this from your periodic table, we'll be able to look at an element and go, okay, if we look at beryllium, we know that beryllium is found in the F shell. Okay, contain the S shell. We've got the, the electrons, the number of electrons, but we know that beryllium is found period number two, okay, which means it's got two energy levels. Okay, and in, in total, how many electrons does it have? We know. How many electrons does beryllium have? What's the atomic number? Four, Four which Four. means how many protons? Four. Four. How many electrons? Four. Four. All stuff that we already know, right? We should already know that. Okay, so now we're, we know that we're, so beryllium is located here. We know beryllium's got a total of four electrons, but how are we going to draw them? So, here it is again. So, notice here we have the S, okay, the S um, subshells, okay, for energy level one, two, three, so on to seven. Then we move over here to the P's. So the 2P, meaning the second energy level, third energy level, fourth. Now, make note of the following. Is the D. Based on what energy level, we, we know that our first transition metal appears here in the fourth energy level. But we are going to label it starting at 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D. Okay? We're not going to worry about why. Just remember it to do it. Okay? Because I don't want to go into the whole story behind that. Because then that's really going to go over your head. Okay? So, electron configuration notation. We're going to be drawing using the following format to write out the electron configuration of our various different atoms. Okay? So here we have hydrogen. So the first number that we show is the principal electron shell, right? That n value, right? So which means, what is the energy level that it occupies? First energy level, okay? The S, right, as we, when we broke down the periodic table, represents the orbital that's occupied. So what type of orbital is being occupied? Is it an S, is it a P, is it a D, is it an F orbital? All right, S, right? And then, this little su uh, superscript number, so like an exponent, so to speak, represents the number of electrons per subshell. So how many electrons can fit in the S orbital? Okay. And if we look at this, how many electrons can fit in, the, in this 1S orbital? We have an S, 1S, 1S, so we have 2. In the 2S orbital, how many can fit? 2. two. In the 3S, 2. 4s, 2, 5s, 2, 6s, 2, 7s, 2. Okay, so in the s orbital, as we said way back, all right, let me clear this and let me go back. Oh. In the s subshell, we can fit a total of two electrons. 
right? So that's where these, these angular numbers came in, okay, to tell us how many electrons can fit. So in the P shell, we can hold up to six electrons. But in total, along that whole, right? So here's our S, right, orbital. Here's our P. We can hold a total of six electrons, right? Remember we said we denoted this as our P. And that P can hold up to six electrons, for one for each one of the atoms, okay? The S can hold up to two, as we said, okay? The D can hold up to 10. So there are two, four, six, eight, 10, okay? Within the energy, the, within the energy level, sorry. Okay. So that's how we're gonna start to order. And this one is only drawn for hydrogen. If we were to draw helium, okay, if we were to do helium, what energy level is it part of? One. One. What orbitals? S. S, right? And how many electrons in that subshell S? One. No, hydrogen has one. Okay. Helium has two. Okay. So now, we have lithium. Lithium is in what, uh, what, uh, what energy level? Two. Two, right? It's in the two energy level, but it does it occupy anything in the in the first energy level? No. Electrons? Yes, it does. Right? It occupies energy in the uh, electrons in the first energy level. Right? Does it have s electrons? No. How many? One. No. Two. Two. Now, does it occupy? Does it occupy anything now from the s shell? So if you look at your periodic table, the second S shell, yeah. subshell, does it occupy how many electrons? One. One. To give us a total of, how many electrons does it have? Three, Three electrons. Okay. We, we're on the second energy level, but we've filled up, filled up our first energy level, right? So which means... These represent the inner electrons. These represent the electrons that are already at its stable state. So that electron that it typically wants to lose is the electron found on that S subshell. Okay. So order of electron configuration notation is as follows here. This is the order. We write it down as 1S, then the 2S, then the 2p, the 3s, then the 3p. Now notice it goes from 3p to 4s, right? Look, so you should be looking at your periodic table, right? So your 4s here, potassium, calcium, but the first transition metal, remember what we said, the transition metals are not in the 4, as we would assume. It's in the 3d subshell, right? So we go 4s to 3d, and then we go to the 4p, Right, because we go, remember, S subshell, D, the transition metals, and um, P, the, um, the, a lot of the non-metals over on the, uh, the right-hand side. So, how do we use this? Well, this is where that whole, how do I remember that? Instead of memorizing that order, right, you use this, because you go 1S, 1S. Then from 1S, you go to 2S. Okay, so then from 2s, you go to 2p, followed by 3s, right? Then from 3s, you go to 3p, but remember we assume, right, that after the 4s, what do we assume we're going to go to? The 4p, right? But we don't. We go to a 3d, and then our 4p to our fifth energy level. So that's how it's written out. With the last one that we're looking at, if we go to the very end of the periodic table, will be our seven.